Often when students begin to study art, they're attracted to a medium or they're attracted to a skill base that's challenging. So mastery is one of the great seducers where you want to get better at something and it just feels really great. And then, because it's so much better, students begin to learn how to think about art and understand this larger context in which it resides, socially, politically, personally. And as that begins to unfold, the real opportunities begin where a person finds themselves in a world that's just much bigger and deeper than they ever thought possible. I knew how to draw as a young kid. And the teachers in public school, anytime they needed a drawing of a Christmas tree, they'd drag me up and do it. Keep in mind my belief that being able to draw really has very little to do with whether you should be an artist or not. But my elementary school teachers thought that was one of the markers. And so it just became something that I did. And I never imagined myself within that career. During the time I was in graduate school, I began to get an idea of what it means to be an artist and whether I want to have anything to do with that. I started teaching right out of graduate school and college in Mississippi. I moved to Fresno, California in 1968, where I taught at Fresno State. And I've been teaching at college since 1989. And I can't imagine giving up teaching. I see it as a crucial part of my studio practice. It's a place where I can draw out ideas of students and then we can think imaginatively. At the time that I was wor working in the 70s, I was converting real things in the world into numbers. A kind of early effort to theorize digital content at a time when nobody knew what digital content meant. What I was doing that was different from conceptual artists was that I was reinvestigating representation. And so I was exploring issues of that was core to women and black artists through the language of conceptualism, but it didn't look like work done by a black artist. Eight trees overlaid on top of eight reds. Taz strikes me as one of the smartest and funny people I know. When I do a studio visit, I've learned to mostly listen. Tony Carmichael uh, started Snick in the 60s. The way I work with my artists is we strictly look at the relationship as a partner relationship that is mutually beneficial. Well, the last time I was here, I saw it flat on the table. You showed me the beginnings of it. I show the work at the gallery, so I make that connection to the museums and to the market, to the private collector. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of expensive, but it's okay. <laughs> Here in the United States, the market is incredibly important for an artist to provide the financial footing to run a large studio, to produce work, and to really have the work grow. Is that the light tracks? So we as gallerists provide a situation where the artist is protected from market up and downs because they change and they change faster and faster. We can technically show or present whatever we like. We're a private business. Once you build a larger operation, like my gallery, you can't just only do what you feel like doing. You also have to make it work financially. So we are involved every step of the artist's career, both the reputation of the gallery and the careers of the artists grow together. Charles had a very important career in the 70s and early 80s, and then the art market crashed. And so when I picked him up, he barely had a studio, and there was very little output. So we did a show, it was very well received, and then he was invited in the Venice Biennale, and we have been doing very well ever since. Both the critical success and the financial success that Charles has received 
has had a huge impact not only on his career but on the, the whole arts economy surrounding his career. He has been able to rent a larger studio, hire assistants, and these assistants can finance their own beginning art careers and it also has a very positive impact on the gallery. And then of course, crate builders, framers, photographers. What we do in the gallery has a farther reaching effect on what culture everybody experiences. Because very often what you see in a museum has been shown in galleries first. Like a, you know, major show. The museum acquisitions are the most important acquisitions that we can and secure you can for an artist. See how each of these round shapes are so an important milestone in Charles's career was when LACMA acquired work and we were extremely excited. LACMA acquired a piece called Trisha Brown Dance. And it was very important to me because it was the first actual purchase that LACMA has made in my work. And so I regarded it as a mark of the public legitimation of my career as an artist. We showed a work of Charles's, and it's a piece of his from 1980. It's a work on paper that diagrams a dance by the performer Trisha Brown. Charles has recorded her movement by numbers. It's the kind of thing that questions abstraction versus representation. When I was a young artist, there was much less money in the art world, and there were a lot less artists. The museum's led. Right now, it's changed because the market has become so dominant and so powerful, the determination of important art is being made by the collectors themselves. A lot of people look to the market as the adjudicator of what's important. The museum, I think, has to figure out a new relationship to communities and to culture. LACMA is successful at that. The thing about art museums is that they continue to be more and more popular and more central to communities. Part of it is that we are the repositories of the history of culture. But really, museums have become a gathering space for communities as well. Our digital culture has upended the idea of place because people can form a community across the globe, digitally. But I've never seen that to be a replacement for the gathering spaces that human beings, as long as we live in physical bodies, still need. You have to understand what a huge impact an art museum makes on a local economy. We employ 450 people, the researchers, the curators, all the people who install works of art. They're carpenters, they're electricians. But then there's the whole business side. We have financial people, we have database specialists, we have computer programmers, we have marketing specialists, we have people who can raise money, plus numerous consultants and artists every year. We build buildings. That's hundreds of millions of dollars going into job creation. So it's an amazing investment when people invest in the arts. They're not just making a building that's got construction dollars attached to it. They're making a destination that many people will spend money to come to. It used to be that the major museums in the 90s were very often acquiring works from New York galleries and it meant for artists, if they really wanted to have a major career, that they had to live and work in New York. And all of this has, in the most dramatic ways, changed in the last 10 years. The LACMA curators come and see pretty much every show that I do. So LACMA has been extremely up-to-date in knowing what's going on and acquiring works of important artists for the museum. I have an exhibition called The Grid Work coming up at the Hammer Museum. A one person survey of my uh, work in general, but that ultimately we got it down to my early work. LACMA had agreed to loan my piece, Trisha Brown Dance, to the Hammer. This is one of the things that important institutions do for each other. 
Yeah, it's um, it's exciting to be able to see this piece again. Trisha Brown dance is from 1980 to 1981. And uh, I think it's indicative of a larger movement of artists who were concerned with ideas around information. And his usage of systems is a really integral part of the conversation around conceptual art. In a broad scheme, we believe in Charles and his work and what it means to other artists and other museum collections, what it means to the history of art. And so acquiring this piece is testament to its importance. It's going to be amazing to see the work over on the other side of town and to see it in a completely different context amidst other works from the same time period. The work is coming here. Installation will start in a couple of weeks, and then we will find out how the community responds to it. Los Angeles is getting so much international traction and the importance as an art metropolis in the United States has greatly increased and is going to greatly increase in the next couple of years if a Los Angeles-based institution is early in the acquisition. So LACMA Hammer Museum has acquired works by Charles Gaines. MoCA has acquired works. The Orange County Museum Charles has been very much supported by the local institutions. Art centers are very important. And I know this because I lived in a number of locations that were not art centers. In terms of being a part of a national and international discourse about art, in terms of being in a place where your ideas have the opportunity to influence the ideas of others. Art centers are crucial. This is and so what we know about art is a consequence of the existence of those communities.